Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to another edition of the BNA to Virtual Event Space. Very happy to welcome on to today's event some folks from Nanlite. We've got Kelly Mina and Sam Mallory. What's happening? How are you folks doing today? We're good. Sam is mostly going to be in the chat room, guys. So if you have any questions or anything like that, he's going to hit you up in the chat. But we're excited to be here. We're going to geek out about some lighting. Awesome. I'm super excited. Kelly is going to be talking about lighting tips for transitioning from photo to video, which I think everybody can relate to and I think is a super important topic to address. So uh, I hand over the torch to you, Kelly. I will be here in the background and uh, joining you here and there. But uh, again, any questions, feel free to get them in. Thanks for being here. Thanks to uh, Nanlite for sponsoring today's event and uh, see you in a little bit. Thanks, Scott. So I basically am going to just jump in and talk about continuous light. So the main things I want to focus on are kind of why would a photographer want to know more about video lights? Um, something has been developing over the past few years where so many more photographers are interested in doing video. Um, there's so many reasons behind that. We'll dive into a few of them. Again, if you have any opinions about that or ideas about that, your own experience, other photographers, um, definitely let us know in the comments because we want to hear from you. We want to know why you're interested in basically doing some video lighting. Um, we're also going to talk about translating your photographic aesthetic into motion. And what I mean about that is you have a style. If you're a photographer and you've been working for a while, whether you're doing headshots or you're doing more fashion or you know whatever the kind of photography that it is that you're doing, you probably have some kind of aesthetic or style that people hire you for, you know, maybe you do food photography, but it's super dramatic food photography, you know, everyone has their own way of approaching photography and approaching how they light something. So I do want to talk a little bit about how do you go from creating that one image and having that specific style and then letting that style kind of translate into motion. Um, and it can be kind of overwhelming for a lot of photographers because there's so many moving elements when it comes to video versus photo. Um, but something that's really gonna allow you to kind of expand and grow is being able to use continuous lights. So it does say video lighting for photographers, but a little cheat, it means continuous lighting. It really just means basically making sure that instead of using a strobe or something that just gives you a flash or a moment that you capture in one image, um, you have something that allows you to have continuous motion and continuous capturing from beginning to end. So we'll talk a little bit about that as well. Uh, and again, yep, continuous light, put that as a third point, uh, the pros and cons for photographers. So I do work for a continuous lighting company named Nanlight, and I am a filmmaker as well. And so I'm going to talk a lot about the kinds of continuous light and LED options that you have, but I didn't want to ignore the cons of using continuous light if you're a photographer who's used to using strobe lights. Um, I personally think, especially, I mean, I'm biased, I'm a filmmaker at heart and I love photography as well. Um, I love continuous light because it allows me the opportunity to use both. But if you are someone who's freezing motion or something like that, um, we'll talk about where maybe continuous lights are not the thing and where continuous lights can really expand your portfolio or expand what it is that you're working on, you're focused on, you're passionate about. And then throughout everything, we'll talk a little bit about some lighting fundamentals. I do know that there's probably different photographers watching this, whether you're somebody who's already using strobe lights in a studio and you've been shooting for 20 years and now you're considering doing video as well or learning more about continuous light. And then there might be people who are more natural light photographers who are just starting to think about shaping light themselves and not relying on the sun or not relying on the uh, atmospheric light that's around you. Um, so we'll sprinkle that in, but again, throw questions into the comments so that we know what it is that you wanna dive into. We definitely wanna make sure that this is also interactive. So one thing I wanna jump into is talking about using both continuous light for both photo and video. So give this a second to just open up. Basically, we've been working with a lot of photographers who shoot and are considering also simultaneously shooting on set. So this is actually a photographer, uh, Hunter Arthur. We have worked with him and we have like given him lots of different lights to play with and his favorite lights are the fours of 500s. They're the most powerful monolight that Nanlite has presently. And basically they're a, a monolight with the Bowens 
uh, mount on them. So what that means is, in case you aren't somebody who's using strobe lights or using different lights in the studio, that allows you to put so many different types of modifiers on your light. And so he incorporated it into his setup to be able to actually shoot stunning photos like what you just saw. But then at the same time, once he's done with a setup photo wise, he changes his DSLR camera to video mode and shoots videos for his clients. And the reason he has made this transition is because of demand. The reason I emphasize demand is because if you are a working photographer who's working with a lot of different clients that have different expectations or different packages that they're expecting you to offer, um, a lot of times that could mean video because we live in an age where basically social media expects video at this point. I mean, Instagram changed their whole platform recently where they're really focusing a lot on video. And I know a lot of photographers who are kind of crushed by it. I'm a filmmaker. I honestly, I like the fact that on Instagram, you can see all these beautiful images, but there's such a push on platforms for video that clients expect it almost when they hire a photographer. They expect to have some kind of video element. You even see Hunter here using his iPhone. He would get quick clips that he could then send to a client to then put on their Instagram. You could do it vertical, you could do it horizontal. Um, and then he got more like quality 4K images out of his DSLR to create an actual piece that they could release later on different platforms. Um, honestly, we're living in a day where all of these things are happening at the same time. Like our social media is happening at the same time, but we're also kind of doing all these things on set as well. So to have continuous lights is a way of being able to capture all of those things. Again, we will talk about if you're used to strobes, what converting uh, from strobes into continuous lights might look like for you. But the basic point that I wanted to make here was the versatility that so many photographers are using to expand into video and then also expand into the kind of work that they do. So if you are somebody who has certain clients, I'm sure that they probably already had people ask you to maybe shoot video as well. And I think now it's much more likely that it's possible to do that. So moving right along, I'm gonna show you guys also a video that Hunter did uh, basically with the Forza 500s and different modifiers. This one has some sound, so I'm gonna let you guys just experience this, but it's a just beautiful video that he shot. I really wanted to show you guys that is because Hunter has somehow found his aesthetic and then has expanded that aesthetic to incorporate video in a way that I think is really unique and really himself. So something else I, I really wanted to jump in there and kind of emphasize is if you have a certain kind of approach to lighting or aesthetic, it's kind of amazing how he's able to make these moving images with the lighting that he has been using for the photos that I'm showing you now as well. So he has kind of a combination of being able to do a certain makeup, do a certain setup, get the shots that he wants, and then kind of multitask and grab a new tool or change the setting on his camera and go from there, you know? And these are just really, really beautiful photos um, that he also got. And you can tell that these were also in the moving video that, that he did as well. So it's just kind of amazing how someone can do these different setups, get these beautiful images, and then take that same amount of time and expand it into utilizing uh, video and to use that to, 
to basically add on again, like another package for clients or something else that you're able to solidify within your work and possibly sell to your clients. So I did promise that we would use, we talk a little bit about the cons um, and I'd love for you guys to kind of jump in in the chat as well. And let me know if you think, you know, if you're on the fence about going to just purely um, continuous light, that's something that's an interesting conversation to have. I personally think I know a lot of photographers who kind of have both. They have strobe lights in their arsenal for when they want to freeze motion or when they want to overpower the sun. And then they have continuous lights for when they want to do something more like what Hunter ends up doing, where he has, you know, a beautiful setup, some powerful LED lights that don't overheat, and he's able to capture images um, that he can then also expand into doing video all with the same setup without having to break something down and reset something up. Um, so those are really the main two things that I think might be some cons for anybody who's a photographer who's so used to strobe lights, so used to that power that comes out of them a lot of the times to be able to freeze motion. You can still freeze motion with continuous lights for sure, uh, but not to the extent, not like this droplet that you see. Not to that to that instance that you might want if you know you're shooting someone jumping in the air and you want that precise exact shot of them frozen up there. Um, so freezing motion, uh, strobe lighting provides the kind of lighting power that allows for higher shutter speeds that can freeze motion easily. Um, and then overpowering the sun. So I know you probably see all the time when you're booking spaces and stuff like that, there's these beautiful loft spaces with sun coming in and you know, you can use natural sunlight and then maybe you can use some strobe lights to overpower the sun to get like a film noir or more dramatic look and you just have to kind of change your shutter speed and uh, your settings in your camera. Um, that's not something with continuous light you can do. So one thing I would say in terms of a mindset of moving from either strobe lights or, you know, something where you're used to being able to overpower the sun and the, the ambient lighting, the first thing most filmmakers do when they go into a space is make everything dark. <laughs> close the shades, shut everything else off, and then put on your continuous lights and shape that light. Um, so if you're looking to overpower the sun, you can to a degree, but not to the degree that you could with strobes. And I just want to be very straightforward about that, um, especially if you're somebody who's transitioning, having certain expectations of what you can and can't get. And playing around with it and seeing where that threshold is, is something I would definitely say you should try to experience. If you can get your hands on, you know, good continuous lights, uh, the Nanlite products are good quality in terms of the LEDs, like we, the light quality and color rendition is really great. It's high CRI, everything's over a 95. Um, and that's the kind of stuff that you also want to make sure of is that you're getting a good quality LED to be able to get the kind of photos you're expecting to get, especially if you're moving from the strobe world. Okay, so continuous lights, the pros. So somebody that I work with is uh, Ari, who does our social media for us. She is a photographer who's been getting into photography for the past couple of years. And she's been mainly using strobes and of course is now using more Nanlite stuff. They're the monolights, the FS series that she's been utilizing. And the main thing that she keeps telling me is how she loves that what you see is what you get. And I might be, as a filmmaker in my background being film, I'm a little spoiled to be able to see that. Like sometimes when I have tried to use strobes in the past, um, you know, you make estimates, you take ratios, you take meterings, you, do, you can do different things to know what you're gonna get, but you don't exactly know what you're gonna get until you look at the image and then make adjustments from there. And what I really love about continuous lights and something that I think is really great for people who might even just be starting off is being able to see the result being able to see what that light is doing without having to wonder what it's doing or, you know, wonder when you take the picture, was it the exact, you know, um, shadow that you were going for, uh, that kind of stuff. You can actually just look in the real world and look at your subject and look at the light and look where it's falling, see where the shadows are going, see what the light is doing. Um, and there's something that I personally just really love about that because then I feel like I'm more connected to my camera and what I'm shooting. So obviously we've already made the point that you can do both photo and video at the same time, which is great. But even if you're just a photographer who is a natural light photographer and you're used to being able to maybe see the sun and see what the sun is doing and have your model change positions 
or you know use the atmosphere and the lighting within the atmosphere to kind of create something within your within your image you could start playing around with being able to shape the light the way you want it to direct the light the way you want it to instead of having to kind of rely on your atmosphere you can actually control the lighting but still be able to see what it's doing and i think that transition is actually really a lot easier for one to make um and again it does still broaden the fact that you could use it for video and you could do other things with it it doesn't limit you um it doesn't make it that you can only do photo you can actually do both very well um, another thing I wanted to throw out there is also color without gels. So in this picture here, uh, Brandy Nicole, who's an awesome photographer, she's just modeling right now for Miss Emily Teague, who's an also a wonderful photographer that she happens to live with. Um, but the light that's lighting her right now, that's a mix panel. It's a Nanlite mix panel. And uh, it allows you to have various effects and special effects and things like that. But it also allows you to have any kind of gel you could possibly think of. So I will talk a little bit later about how monolights, much like strobes, you could put gels on them. You can use soft boxes. Um, I like to emphasize for a lot of photographers, basically how they can use monolights because so many of them have experience using strobe lights. Um, but there's so much more out there in terms of the LED world. You know, you can go beyond a monolight that has a Bowens mount. You can actually use panel lights that have literally any kind of Roscoe gel built inside of it. You could do effects. Uh, the mix panels also have like a soft mode and a hard mode. So you could have a hard light or a soft light without even needing to use a soft box. So um, it's kind of, I think, something that people who are so used to using strobes are don't even realize how much is accessible to them and how many different options they actually have to expand not only into video, but also just the photography that they're doing already. So I Real do quick, have, Kelly, yeah, what's you, up, Scott? Before you jump into that, I, I want to address maybe, maybe you're going to address this, but uh, sort of the, we'll call it the elephant in the room, right? So uh, <laughs> where are you? I want to see you, Scott. You want to see me? I'm right here. I'm Hi. Right here. Welcome Hello. back. <laughs> Welcome. So let, let's talk about when you're talking about uh, video, because we are talking about transitioning from photo to video. And obviously, a lot of people will utilize these for photo. They're great for them. Don't get me wrong. But I want to focus a little bit on video for a second. One of the old kind of issues with LEDs in general, and I'm sure that you can speak in your experience, this is that with LEDs in the past, you'd have this issue of kind of rolling with the lights in terms of the LEDs, uh, which was an issue of the shutter of the actual camera itself, mm -hmm. the lights themselves, you know, with, with newer updated technologies and newer LEDs, like the man lights, what you guys are producing now, is that still something that you have to be concerned at at all? Or is that pretty much a thing of the past and it's just, it's gone now? I honestly think that's a thing of the past. We actually did a video on our YouTube channel um, for very high shutter speeds and also just like, um, frame rates we shot basically super slow-mo with a phantom camera and you know how if a light has any flickering issues or if there's any kinds of disconnect with that light you'll see that in the footage um the more you try to actually you know uh over crank or under crank you know so we have not seen that as much and even the slow motion video we went up to like a thousand frames and didn't see any flickering issues wow. so i do think that it's possibly a thing of the past i definitely haven't noticed it for using Nanlite and for photo or for video for anything like that. Awesome. Sweet. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Do you have any, I know that you obviously know a lot about lighting, Scott, and you've done a lot within the B&H store and beyond a as a photographer. Don't, don't lie to the people. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any like examples of people asking you about moving from photo to video? Because I actually know one of the videos that you guys have on the B&H channel is like top six ways, uh, top six tips to move from, from photo to video. And that was one of the most popular videos that you guys had. And I think it's because so many people are actually making that transition now. I, I agree with you. I think that, you know, we, we talked about this previously. And I think one thing is, is sort of like you mentioned in the beginning is so many people, when you get hired for a job nowadays, it's not just, you can't just expect to go in there and shoot strictly photo. Yeah. 
you know, maybe, maybe if you're looking at wedding photography, that's a scenario where it's a little bit different and you're going to have a second shooter who's going to do the video. Yep. But most of the times we're finding, especially like you said, in the store, people that we speak to on a constant basis, they want to do a to Z soup to nuts, if you will, because it's, it's just a necessity nowadays. People don't want to go out and hire two different people have to worry about that burden. It's so much easier if you offer that one product and you can say, Hey, I could do both for you in one person in one package. I'll edit everything. I'll, I'll get it out to you. And so, uh, you know, I think that versatility, especially in the led lights is, is so great to see from companies like man light. Um, you know, I can just speak to my experience. Uh, a lot of people who watch the channel know that I worked in the store previously. And so I've, I've seen man light from sort of their inception to when they came to market and, uh, it's been great to watch. And, and I, I told you previously, I'm a big fan and I know you'll touch on them later, but, uh, the man light, uh, the, the pavo the tubes. tubes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Pavo tubes. I love them. I, I love anything with color. And, and even, you know, you mentioned the mix panel. I, I, I didn't even think about the mix panel when we talked about it. Um, there, there's some great products out there. So I'll let you get back into it. That that's just my view on it. I, I like, no, stuff. I love that. Is there anybody in the chat throwing in their experience? Cause I'm just curious about other people's experience too, because a lot well, of the people I talk to definitely talk about transitioning over. Yeah. On the zoom, we have the, the chat lock, but if you guys want to get any kind of comments or anything like that in on zoom, you can use the Q and a tab. And then the same thing with Facebook and Vimeo. If you want to shoot us some answers there, you can throw them in the comment section. I promise you we'll get them over to Kelly and we'll let her know. So let us know what you think. Yeah, definitely. Let me know. I definitely want to know what people are thinking about that for sure. Um, in the meantime, I am going to show another slide. So the fact that you talked about the Pava tubes is great, Scott, because honestly, I think that it's one of the most popular things that people know Nanlite for. We do have mono lights, we do have mixed panels, but I think the unique feature of the tubes, so many people have been utilizing in their photography and then trickling into video as well. So let me try to share my screen again. There we go. Play current one. So I wanted to break down basically some of the different types of lights too. So a lot of photographers that talk to me about transitioning from photo to video, I do lean them towards mono lights if they've already been using speed lights in their studio. The reason being there's a certain kind of familiarity there and there's a certain kind of, um, you know, just a general comfort zone that there is. Because if you're used to lights that have Bowens mounts and you're used to being able to use soft boxes and strip banks and umbrellas, um, the mono lights give you the ability to do that. They give you the ability to kind of shape the light in a way that you're kind of used to using them, right? And so I think a big benefit to transitioning over to doing video continuous light, if your photographers already use strobes, Honestly, monolites are great because of the fact that the learning curve, if you will, will not be too steep. It'll be something that's very familiar and it'll take something that you're kind of used to already having and having a format that you're used to having um, and kind of, you know, applying that to the continuous light for whatever images you want, want to make and then video that you might want to do. Um, so I think, you know, many photographers are already familiar with that format. And so having something like that and having a Bowens mount too is really important because you really can put so many different types of modifiers on that. We actually just came out with a projector mount. There's a Nanlite Bowens projector mount that I'm kind of obsessed with. I just got it back from somebody who borrowed it. And it is something that really allows you to do a spotlight. You can use the leaves to kind of center in and actually focus on something with the light. Um, it just, the options just keep expanding, especially with something like a Bowens mount. You may even be someone who has modifiers already that you've already invested in. Um, and it's kind of like, you know, when you have a bunch of Canon lenses and then you have a Sony camera and you have an adapter, now you can use it with that camera. You know, the fact that these lights have Bowens mounts allow you to be able to utilize stuff that maybe you already have as well. Um, and then we were already talking about Scott and I mentioned the tube lights, but the panel lights allow for colors. Um, it's just RGB. There's actual like Roscoe type gels inside of there. And you can choose whether you want a, you know, 5,600 degree Kelvin or a 3,200 degree Kelvin, and then put a different gel on to get a different effect. So there's so many different things you can do there. Um, talking about Kelvin's actually a really interesting thing too, because basically a lot of the monolights are daylight balance, 5,600 degrees. 
um, the Forza 500, 300, 200, um, but we do have a Forza 300B. Um, and you might just see more bicolor lights coming out within Nanlite as well. But basically having the bicolor possibility too really allows you to choose whatever Kelvin range you want. And the mixed panels have a Kelvin range along with the RGB and so do the Pavo tubes. So something that a lot of people who are using strobes don't really get to use a lot is the ability to change their Kelvin um, from more tungsten and warm to something that's a little bit more daylight. And uh, Scott, we had talked about, could you jump back on? I actually wanted to talk a little bit about um, the transition of using tools like the 5D. Remember when we talked about that? I do. I really like to kind of equate the idea of using continuous lights and making that transition from photo to video or not even a transition, it's incorporating it into it. Cause it's not like you're leaving behind your photography you're expanding to include video. And I really think that, I think it was the 5D Mark II, right? That came out with a video feature that blew people's minds. Like they didn't even expect the quality of video to come out of these small cameras that people knew for photography. Um, and I think having similar tools that can do two things at once is what expands people to actually bridge onto new art forms. Yeah, I think, I think, like you said, I think the 5D Mark II was that first camera that you saw video. I mean, people were talking about it for so long. They were talking about, you know, we need video, we need video, we need video. And now finally, you know, well, not now, now, now we're in a completely different era. But back then, you know, the 5D Mark II came out with that and people were like blown away. And I think, yeah. I think, I think everybody was blown away. I think all the other manufacturers out there were kind of like, uh oh, like now we've got to sort of figure this out too. And they might've been, but I think Canon, you know, they pushed the envelope, they pushed past that and they, they got there first. And, and now it's almost, it's almost funny because especially from the, the sales side of things, you know, talking about seeing people coming into the store and things like that. When, when you address a camera in the first place, it's almost like the photo isn't the first question people ask about anymore. They ask about the video aspect yeah. of things. They ask about the video quality, you know, what's the frame rate on it? Can I shoot high def 4k, 8k, you know, and, and it, it's almost mind blowing to think that a few years ago, there wasn't even that opportunity or that option to be able to do that. And now, now it's almost a, a necessity or a guarantee. It's, it's almost like if you see a camera that doesn't shoot video, you're almost like, wait, what? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. You expect it. And if it's not there, it's a weird thing. And I think that says a lot in terms of where we are now and what people expect to be able to do with these tools, which is another reason why I'm just like reemphasizing the continuous light game is something that allows you to incorporate those two things as well. Because just like Hunter was on set and he's using the same camera, he just takes that camera that he was shooting photos with and puts it on a gimbal puts it on a video mode and moves around and is able to kind of move on to the next setup. Um, and you can't really do that with anything other than continuous lights and lights that you can rely on to kind of be able to capture both of them. Yeah. And I think, I think just to kind of play on your point, I think one of the things that people, people misconceive, I think would be the right, right terminology for it is continuous light has been around for a really long time. Oh yeah. It, it's yeah. not like it's a new technology. The, the LED technology is maybe a newer technology in terms of efficiency and, you know, the ability to not burn your hand off when you pick up a light and, uh, or, or have <laughs> your hot gloves, which I think, I think some of us older people can, can remember oh, yes. and uh, show the scars of that. But you know, that, that technology has been around. It's just been improving ever, ever exponentially. And, it, and becoming it's more compact. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And it's kind of crazy because I think, you know, not only is it more compact and it's not hot and it's some, but yet it's still powerful. Like, you know, you can actually mimic and use the Forza 500 and make it the sun that's outside, you know, at nighttime. We're actually working on something right now, a tutorial where we're going to show how to shoot a daylight scene at nighttime because that's how powerful they are. But I used to have to hold, like haul big ballast and like HMI lights and like make sure I didn't burn myself to be able to get that kind of exposure to be able to meet the demands of like a film location or something like that, you know? And they have been around for a long time. You're absolutely right. And I think the fact that they're less daunting now 
also make photographers aware of the fact that it's something that they can do too and that they can actually incorporate into video. It's kind of crazy what you can do with very little now as compared to before. Like, I think I was able to see that transition as a filmmaker and see how, you know, big heavy lights, big film crews. And it's just kind of crazy. Like a beautiful commercial could be shot by a few people, the right lights and, you know, a small camera. Definitely. So I'm just gonna play this video as well. I just wanna show you guys another aspect of how, uh, Hunter Arthur has been basically utilizing a lot of his lights. He basically did a tutorial for us where he showed how he was able to do all the things that he was doing with his strobe lights before. He was able to do hard light, which you're gonna see here. And then he also shows how he's able to modify it. Like the previous video that we saw where he was actually doing uh, iPhone clips in, for video and doing clips with his DSLR and also taking photos, he was bouncing the Forza 500 into the ceiling to make this kind of overcast soft light look. And within this video, he actually shows that if you use the Forza 500, either with a reflector or without the reflector, you can get that really strong, dramatic hard light. And then he jumped into how you can also do soft light. And you'll notice he's gotten these beautiful images throughout the day, but he was able to also get these video clips as well. Um, and he was able to use one of our biggest soft boxes, which is the Parabolic 150. And he used basically a V-flat to bounce more light and to create this overall bounce soft atmosphere that he was able to do both beautiful photos. I love the photos he got out of this and also video clips as well so that he could provide that to the client later so that they can use them for whatever they wanted. Now, it might be hard to see this. I think it's a kind of overlapping with the, the bobbleheads we have here, but this basically said freezing and blurring motion. So he wanted to show that you could still do artistic things like blur motion is pretty easy, but you can still freeze motion with a bright enough LED light. So I know I made that point before that it's harder to do it, but really it's, it's just a different kind. You can only go to an extent, you know, like that droplet you're not going to get, but you can definitely get something where your model's jumping in the air and you can have a bright enough light and a high enough shutter that her hair freezes in the air. That's still something that you can definitely accomplish. And then I also know I talked about RGB lights and, you know, mixed panels and tube lights and all of that kind of stuff, but I also wanted to show how some photographers who were used to using strobes can use their gels that they already have as well. You know, like if you like the gel combinations that you've picked out to, to utilize for different aesthetics that you're doing, or, you know, you just prefer to use different kinds of gels, uh, it's still something you could definitely do. You can take your monolites, you can put some different gels on them and you can create different aesthetics that not only can you use for your photos, but again, you can use for your video as well. So I like that basically Hunter decided to kind of take some of the gels he was already utilizing with his previous lights and just create this kind of ethereal setup for himself. So what I will do is I will also show you guys this really awesome video that we did. Two photographers that we've worked with that I mentioned kind of in passing before are Miss Emily Teague and Brandy Nicole. If you guys don't already follow them on Instagram, you absolutely should. They're incredibly talented photographers who have very different aesthetics, but they happen to be best friends and roommates. And uh, we decided a really fun thing to do, that's Emily right there, was to challenge them. So this is our photographer versus photographer challenge that we did on our YouTube channel. So Nanlite USA, our YouTube channel, Sam will throw it in the, in the chat. Um, we decided to basically take two incredibly talented photographers who have very, very different aesthetics and approaches and basically surprised them with the shoot where they didn't know what was going to be accessible to them. They didn't know what they were going to be shooting. Um, and we chose this location that had all these different props and furniture and all sorts of stuff. And then we gave them just like an array of different Nanlite fixtures and modifiers to use. So it was a great social experiment. <laughs> we were able to see like what it was that they leaned towards, what they, and, and Emily kind of started with the monolites cause she's so used to using, you know, originally like strobe lighting and having like monolites that you put soft boxes on. She used the lantern for a little bit to get like this drop light effect. Um, that was a little bit more dramatic and everything. And it was kind of interesting how you give a photographer who's super talented four hours and you give them a playpen of all these different fixtures that they can use. 
the kind of stuff they can come up with is just incredible. And here you see the PavaTube X series. So these are the tube lights that Scott was talking about before. And Emily just did this amazing setup with this tub that just happened to be in the studio. And I just love how she was able to actually use the different Pavo tubes and use different colors. Like she used like a teal at some point, And then she had like a warmer hair light that she was having one of her assistants hold. And she was able to just quickly change settings and change the colors and change the vibe and the tone of it. And I really wanted to show everybody this because I wanted to show not only unique ways uh, that how photographers have used these lights, but Emily is actually transitioning into cinematography. So I'm going to talk about that a little bit and how her using the continuous lights have inspired her to realize that she can also expand into the photo world and expand her aesthetic into the photo world. Um, and this is the lovely Miss Brandy Nicole. She has a very ethereal, um, dreamy kind of style, and she's been using more continuous lights as well. And she's actually using the projector mount in that photo over there to kind of highlight the things she wanted to highlight. Um, this space also had a piano. She went to town on that piano. She had so many piano shots and yet they were all different. They were all gorgeous. Um, and she shot it from above. She had her get into the piano at some right there. She got into the piano and notice how she used the Pava tube inside of the actual piano. And the reason I wanted to show this was basically to demonstrate not only creative ways that photographers have utilized continuous lights, but both of these photographers in particular have been inspired by using continuous lights to expand into video. Emily, who you saw earlier, she's actually wanting to develop her skills as a cinematographer. She really feels inspired to move into what a lot of people who are in photography call motion instead of video. And so she's, you know, utilizing gimbals and doing all sorts of things. And Brandy has not only used continuous lights in her photography, but she's actually started her own YouTube channel. So another reason I've asked like why people might be here watching this or what things they're interested in, it's kind of funny because, you know, photographers might want to know more about continuous light and video light for things beyond taking what it is that they typically shoot and expanding that into video. You might be filming yourself doing something. You might be doing your own YouTube channel, which a lot of people have started out kind of doing, especially after the pandemic started. And Brandy is one of those people. Um, I love what she did with this. Look at this. She's shooting through the shoe. And it's like this weird prism kind of thing. And look at the photo she's able to get out of that. It's just unreal. And I, what I love about this photo too, is it really shows you what a photographer's vision can be. And then imagine taking that vision and taking that aesthetic and expanding it into motion and being able to expand that into actual movement, you know? I have to say, Kelly, that is 100% yeah. exactly. As, as you threw that up on the screen, I looked at that image and I Isn't said, Isn't it beautiful? Is exactly why I'm such a trash photographer. <laughs> <laughs> because I have no vision. And then that's okay. That's fine. This is not about me. This, that was an excellent image. Uh, Bruce kicked us. You're off like, I don't the... hate it. I don't hate it. <laughs> no, I thought, I, I think it's great. I think it's great. It's a compliment to her. I think it was a, a, a well, a well uh, planned and, and creative image that uh, you might not normally see. And, and seeing the behind the scenes of that is very interesting as well, because a lot of people tend to forget that. And, and I know a lot of people watching right now, obviously are, are photographers or videographers, but it's always helpful to see the behind the scenes of, of what's going on because sometimes that sparks our creativity and helps us. So um, thank you for that. I do want to address Bruce has kicked off the questioning. Yes, Bruce. Excited. Thank you, Bruce. Well played, sir. Um, Sam did answer this question, but I think it's a great question for anybody who uh, maybe didn't catch the beginning or who just possibly didn't hear. Uh, in terms of adapters and things like that, are there Bowens adapters that would work with Isnan lights and Broncolor light shapers? Oh, interesting. Sam, did you jump into that at all? Because I don't know if there's any specific adapters. I know that since the standard Bowens mount, a lot of Bowen style uh, modifiers can go on it. But in terms of adapters, I'm not sure. Yeah, he, he he did jump in. He did answer Bruce, Bruce's question. So Bruce got a, a a good a good nice intricate answer from Sam. So <laughs> but uh, but you know he he alluded basically very similar to what you were saying that it's a case by case situation. Um, so you know if you do have questions about that stuff, I'm sure at the end Kelly will throw out some information how to contact them 
if you have questions like that and you know on that base uh, on that case to case uh, scenario they could definitely get that answered um i know sam's jumping in on this one too but um from kelly from your perspective uh how do you go about mixing man lights with something like a strobe i love that question i actually was just looking at that within the q a um it's a very good question. There's so many different ways that you can do that. Like say you're freezing motion with a strobe, but you wanted to get some colors in the background or something with some mixed panels. There's there's lots of different ways that you can go about just mixing them. And I think really creativity is the limit. <laughs> you know, that's actually one of the, the videos I was thinking about making was showing using strobe lights along with some continuous lights and having different creative ways that you incorporate them together. But there's so many different things. Even that shoot with Emily and Brandy, they utilized the lights in ways I didn't even conceive of. Like when Brandy threw it into the piano, she just took the tube and put it, and it was great because it was illuminating her exactly the way she wanted to. And it was a small, thin enough uh, light that it could just go inside of the piano. And you couldn't easily do that with a mono light or a panel or a strobe, you know? Yeah. And, and I think that that kind of leads into another question. You know, one of the things you, you prefaced in the beginning of the video was you kind of got the two of them into a room and you said, like, have at it. You know, yep. here's here's everything. You create something and, you know, show us your vision, that kind of thing, which is great. Um, however, not all of us are lucky enough to be in a room like that with all the gear <laughs> that we want in the world. Well, you just so go to B and H. You I, go to B and H, you, Scott. You, you, took the, you took the words right out of, <laughs> out of out of my mouth. You just you just go to B and H. You, you bring the model. H. You bring the model into B and H, and you you just have there your you inside of B and H. There you yeah. go. Nobody nobody will say anything, right? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> but you know, for somebody who's, who's looking at all these lights and obviously you guys have a full line and a huge mixture of products and, uh, it could obviously be daunting and confusing at times, you know, where, where's a good sort of starting point for somebody who's maybe just getting into the world of continuous lighting and looking at purchasing their first light, where would you kind of push them to go? I do start to lean, especially if you're a photographer who's interested in doing continuous light for the first time, I do lean towards the monolights personally when I, when I make suggestions, only because if you are someone, again, who has used strobe in the past and you're familiar with that, you're familiar with the Bowens, you know, adapters and stuff like that, you can basically make that transition a little easier, but it's funny because I've also worked at B&H, right, Scott, and we always know, like, the first thing you ask is, what's your budget? <laughs> Because there's so many places to start and there are things that are more budget friendly like it we have smaller mono lights like the Forza 60 it comes in a kit. And you can actually have a uh, battery handle that you can put batteries on and you can handhold it and as we say in film Hollywood it and you could walk with an actor or something like that, you know. Um, and that has different modifiers that you can get and expand to and grow with. Um, but it isn't as expensive as like the basically highest Forza we have, the mono light that's the brightest one, which is the Forza 500. So I do lean towards the mono lights for photographers, but I do think it just happens to do with your budget and then also your comfort level. You know, if you're a natural light photographer, honestly, and, and you're on a budget, you could get something like the mixed pad, which is one of the panel lights that we have that doesn't cost as much as the mixed panel, which you might see more on a film set. And you could do soft light, you could do hard light, you could do RGB, you could do special effects. And what a great way to kind of start playing with the light, you know, especially if you're just starting to try to kind of like move from using the sun and figuring out even where do I want this light to point? What do I even want this light to do? You know, um, something like that can be very budget friendly, but also kind of teach you what your vision might be for lighting. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah, for sure. I think also people use what you got, right? So like what, if you can buy something that's affordable and just get started, I think the most important thing is to get started. I, I, I would concur with that. Yeah. Right. It, it's scary. I think it's a scary thing to try something new. And another, a main reason why we felt this would be a good topic for people as well is because not only are there so many photographers interested in video, I think there's a lot of photographers who are a little anxious about getting into video as well, because there are so many other moving elements, pun intended, literal. 
<laughs> there's so many more things to think about. Like you're not just wondering how in one instant where this light is going to go, where the shadow is going to go. You might have the person walking in and out of the light. It might be a split light and then they turn and it becomes a full blown light. You know, you have to start incorporating all of these, these, all of these different things. And the first thing you really need to do is get your hands on a continuous light and start using it and training your eye to see something from point A to point B. In film, we call it position one, right? Position one, you have the actor go back to the first position that they had. And I think that's the most overwhelming part when you're transitioning from something like photo where you're getting an instant, a moment, you have an aesthetic, but you have to start actually thinking beyond the instant and how one instant moves into the other. And just getting your hands on something cont continuous lighting wise, and then just starting to use it, you slowly get an idea of what that is. I'm gonna share one more thing. One thing I wanted to also share was basically something about Pava tubes, your favorite subject, Scott. <laughs> They're great, I love them. A I man likes them. tubes. <laughs> so Emily Teague, who we just showed in those previous clips, um, she actually did a portrait session with Brandy Nicole, who was also in that video. And on the upper right, you see that she used the tubes inside of the shot. And I think it's really interesting to know that there are these continuous lights that you can actually use as a part of the atmosphere. They set a tone, they set an atmosphere. So that was another thing I kind of wanted to throw out there in terms of what Nanlite has in terms of photographers who are also interested in doing video. Because I think we have all seen people shoot music videos and create environments in like a bare studio. And it's like, what am I supposed to do? It's a bare studio. If you make shapes with lights and you have different effects going on and you have different colors going on, you create an environment just by using these lights in interesting ways inside of the frame. Um, and then I loved kind of also showing this shot of her. It's kind of hard. I think it's blocked by some of the bobbleheads as I will. Uh, but there's a shot of Emily holding the Pavo tube in front of the model. And you probably saw that in the BTS shoot. And I love that because it also showed like, again, we were emphasizing how LED lights, they, they're not hot anymore. They're not heavy. This is the, one of the easiest things you can do. And then look at the beautiful result that she got. And she could have easily been rolling video as well. Um, and doing, you know, movement shots and stuff with the same kind of lighting and actually holding, again, Hollywooding the light while she's moving her camera around. Um, the advancements in LED lights and what you're able to do is just kind of astounding and, and they keep advancing. So this is just some lovely social media shots I also wanted to show of Emily. And this is her shooting photo on the right. And then in this one on the left, you see she actually also jumped in with her gimbal, her new gimbal that she was inspired to get because she realized now that she had continuous lights, she could really just go to town and, and do photo and video at the same time. And you'll notice that she did the same thing for her photo as she did for her video. She put like a net on the lens. And I just thought that this was such a great example of kind of showing that once you've incorporated some continuous lights into what it is that you're doing, um, and you already have an aesthetic as a photographer, not only can you shape those lights in similar ways that you're used to shaping other lights, but then you can do things that you've done in the past, like, you know, softening up the image with a filter or using a net, like the way that Emily is using here. And there's just so many different creative ways of, again, transitioning and changing and adding from your aesthetic, your photo aesthetic into the moving, uh, film kind of world. And that was the end of the slideshow. So I'm gonna stop that. So I wanted to see if there were any other questions that people did have. I love Bruce, your questions were so good. Bruce, ask ask some more questions, whatever it is. No. <laughs> Mark, <laughs> Mark, Mark Goldberg, has, Goldberg has some questions. <laughs> there you go, Mark has a question as well. So uh, perhaps this might be a little bit more uh, intricate than, uh, than normal, but uh, he's got a few Nanlite mix pads and a few of the LEDGO panels, and he's purchased the CNW2 to try to control them, uh, but he can't get connectivity. Are there any tips or tricks that you can... Uh, oh, that's interesting. Is it the LEGO? I am curious, Mark. Is it the LEGO that you're having trouble connecting to or the mix pads? Because the mix pads, you don't actually... I'm not sure if you need, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, Sam, I'm not sure if you actually need the uh, the CNW2. 
but you should be able to control it with the app. Uh, if not, I do have our rep Barry Garcia can help you with maybe some firmware upgrades or something like that if something's going with that. But Letgo are a little bit older there and Nanlite's a little separate from Letgo, like Letgo kind of turned into Nanlux. So it might be that they're older units and maybe they're not communicating together. Excellent. So uh, Mark says, Mark specified that he did try the Nanlite. The mix pads first. Well, we'll, we'll get on the phone with you, Mark. I'll, I'll send you, if you don't mind, Scott, we can send him my email and I can hook him up with Barry, our rep. Yeah, definitely. So Sam, Sam, I know you're in the back over there. If you want to, if you want to shoot him a message and, and give him uh, Kelly's email, you guys can connect on that. So that's kind of interesting. I mean, maybe you could talk a little bit about that. Cause I don't know if we talked so much on that. So there is an app to control the lights. Yes. So the Nanlink app, which you can download for free controls a lot of the lights right now. And one of the things that we have that Mark just mentioned is a control box that allows you to utilize older fixtures. So, you know, the Pava tube sees, which I'm using the Pava tube Scott, cause obviously you're in love with the tubes. Uh, the Pava tube sees are the older generation Pava tubes. They're still great. Um, they still have RGB, they still have everything, but you need the control box in order to use the app with that. The Pava tube X, the new tubes that came out, they're Bluetooth and everything else that Nanlite's coming out with from here on out will be Bluetooth so that the app can, can just control them directly. Awesome. Awesome. And, and how many, I mean, in terms of that, how many lights would you be able to link up? I know, I know in the past and correct me if I'm wrong, but I remember that you used to be able to just link the actual tubes to each other via a sync uh, cables. Exactly. Just the sync cables, you know, is, is that something Will you can, will you still need to use those sync cables to kind of connect them or can you just independently from the app connect them and then, you know, just control them based on how you'd like to. You should be able to control them with the app. Although I do love those sync cables because it's a nice way of just kind of like physically linking them up. And then you use one of them as the main light that you can control everything. Um, so if you have people on set that can do that, you can do that, but you can control it with the app. Excellent. Excellent. And then, uh, you know, talking about modifiers, because I, I think we didn't, we, we, we talked about it. We talked about that, you know, with modifiers, there is the, the, you know, ability that you have the the older Bowens mount on some of them and, and on a case to case basis. Um, but what kind of what kind of options are there out there for people who who are, are like me? You know, we, we 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 chatted beforehand and we chatted before, you know, we we came to to this event, you know, previously. And I love modifiers. I think they're cool and exciting and and basically allow you full control of lights. I mean, what kind of line are we looking at? You know, we have Full soft boxes. What what's going on there in the Nanlite line? That's a really great question. Actually, I think it's one of the biggest things that we have that I think make it worthwhile to really be able to shape lights. We have three different soft boxes: uh, the Para 150, the uh, Para 120, and the Para 90. I'm actually using the Para 90 right now, um, and we have uh, strip banks. We have basically the majority of modifiers that you might utilize as a photographer, Dan Light has in their line. There's umbrellas, um, there's the projector mount that I was talking about earlier. So right now we have two different projector mounts. So the Forza 60, which has its own mount, we call it the FM mount, that is smaller than a Bowens mount, but we have a projector for that monolight and we have softbox for that monolight. Um, that also goes with the Forza 150. So those are smaller lights that have smaller mounts that still have their own modifiers you could get. And then we have the Bowens mounts and we have three different size soft boxes uh, for the Bowens. We have now a projector mount, which we're very excited about. I'm actually dorkishly a part of this gaffer group on Facebook. And the second they came out, they were like linking me to all the, what is this coming out? When is this in stock? When is this happening? Because they've been waiting for a projector mount, a Bowens projector mount to come out to, to use for spotlights, to highlight things. Um, there's so many creative things you can do with just that. Um, we have Fresnels as well. I mean, that's pretty much everything that we have. We have anything, I think any gaffer or somebody who wants to shape and modify a light, we can make the light harder or we can make it super, super soft and a huge light source. And, and, and Gobos, you guys got Gobos? 
Yes. So the gobos actually we have for the projector mounts. So the projector mounts have gobos. I use the projector mount a lot as like either a spotlight or for a slither of light, but you can put different gobos like, you know, the Kukaloris back in the day when you would shoot through the Kukaloris and get like, oh, he's under a tree nice. kind of lighting. Uh, you can do that. We have a tree, we have a window, and there's two different sets for each projector mount. So the bigger projector mount for the Bowens and the smaller projector mount, they each have two different Gobo sets that you can get. Excellent. I'm, I'm entering, I'm, I'm, I'm channeling my <laughs> inner, inner Gary. We talked about Gary from the lighting department earlier in one of mm -hmm. our past events. And I'm just, I'm just channeling him. He's a big, he's a big Gobo guy. He's a you know, <laughs> Want to play He's like, what other toys do I get? What other ones? Exactly, exactly. And, and you know, that's I think that's the fun about lighting is is really being able to take products and and use them in fun ways. You know, similar to like we were talking about with with shooting through the shoe or shooting through uh, the, uh, the 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 piano, those kind of things, and, and getting creative with it. I think that's really what lighting is meant to be all about. Is yeah, for sure. You know, keeping traditional. Obviously, the traditional poses are are important oh look i the gary i think gary's in the chat and he said it's all about the gobo gary thank you yes i'm, I'm so excited to hear that, <laughs> that you're, you're 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 watching me and checking up on me and making sure i'm doing a good job so i hope i hope i did you proud gary you, you taught me well uh, <laughs> mark Beautiful. mark nothing like the know? shout out Mark wanted to know, uh, are there any quick open boxes similar to uh, like Angler's got the quick open deep para? Are you guys producing anything like that, planning anything like that? So we do have quick release, quick open soft boxes uh, for the 120 and for the 90. Not the 150 is kind of big to have it be a quick open or quick release kind of a thing. Um, so the two smaller ones, the 120 is actually fairly big. Uh, they do have the, the quick open feature, which I love. Thank you for asking because we've all been there struggling with soft boxes, <laughs> trying I, to get them back or trying to pull them apart. I, I, I will, I will put it on the record. If this is being recorded, you can go back <laughs> and watch this. The first soft box I ever set up, I completely demolished the, uh, the, one of the rods because I didn't know what I was doing. I think and, we've uh, all been there. I really do. Know. There, there, there goes 300 plus dollars. Anyway, moving right along to, to what, what Bruce wants to know about. Bruce wants to know, uh, in terms of the Gobo, we talked about it. Um, he said the Gobo M sizes, the industry standard, does Nanlite not use that? What was the question? I'm sorry, Scott. He said uh, the Gobo M size in the industry is the standard, but does Nanlite not use that size? I don't think so. I think it is a different size, but we have a lot of different options within it. So we have those two different sets and you can kind of get other ones personalized. Awesome. Wonderful. Well, first off, I want to thank Sam. Nobody, nobody saw Sam, but he's the man behind the scenes answering all those techie questions. So I want to thank Sam for being here and, and taking care of really the hard job. Kelly, you and I had the easy job. We just have to, you know, look at the camera and, and, <laughs> and smile and laugh and have a good time. So Sam, you did the really hard job. So thanks so much for doing that and taking care of that on the back end. Kelly, I want to thank you for still being in front of the camera. It is still a difficult job to get up in front of there and, you know, put yourself out there. So thank you so much uh, for introducing us to the Nanlite line and showing us how you could utilize them for photo and video. And of course, as always, our sponsors for the event, Nan like themselves, because without them sponsoring events like this, then we can't talk to Kelly or Sam. And then you've got to just watch me or Derek for an hour go on about probably nothing. So, <laughs> so, so thank you to them. I want to, I want to say, you know, I always, I always want people to know where can they find more about Nanlite, whether that be YouTube or Instagram, how can people keep up with you and interact with you guys? Yeah, well, we do have a wonderful YouTube channel. Actually, I might share my screen real quick if you don't mind. Sure. Uh, and we have a lot of tutorials on there, but we also have like the things that we showed today are on there as well. So if you go to our channel, these are the Q and A's. Uh, we have the photographer versus photographer challenge that we talked about. We have mixed panel versus mixed pad. So we answer questions on the different lights, how to light a horror scene. We have how to light for night. So we have gone out of our way to make sure that we basically have a lot of like real life interpretations of how to use these tools. Awesome. So you guys have it. Check them out on YouTube. 
Thanks again, Kelly. Thanks again, Sam. Thanks to our sponsors, Nanlite. And of course, as always, thanks to you at home or in the office, maybe may, maybe on your lunch break, <laughs> just sneaking away for a little bit to tune in. We appreciate Everyone needs a break. That's it. Take yeah. it. If you didn't get just it. Take your it, break. Tell your boss that I said it was okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That'll make it all fine. <laughs> that's that's it. Exactly. So thanks so much. We appreciate it. Uh, as you know, this has been another edition of the B&H Virtual Event Space in the Books. We'll catch you next time.